viewers welcome back to mules of tech zone this is ravan lingam and this is in continuation of our series like uh, playing around with curitech ai plugin um i heard like most of them are using this curitech ai plugin for data weave generator or you know uh, for data weave related stuff but i wanted to show you something interesting which i found is really uh useful and uh, very important so i'm going to show you that now first things first as you know for uh, like before even connecting to curitech ai uh, please make sure that you open only one project that the projects should be closed uh, i'll show you something like uh, before closing this projects uh, you need to click on connect to curitech ai which will take you to the authorization page and once you authorize you will come back to the studio and you can see all of the tasks available here so when i click on new task it will show you like the two open projects like my my first test project and test pro but it's always good that you close uh, if you, if if you do this like right click and close unrelated projects uh close okay and when you do like again like new task here it will appear like both projects so it's always good you close it and now that we have closed other projects it's good to sign out and sign in again there is no harm but it's better for, for a smooth process all right so the thing that i wanted to show you now were, is like as i said like you need to create a project first i don't have any files but i created a dummy project over here what i'm going to do next is something interesting so i'll show you like i have already created a prompt for this and this task has run so for this what i'm going to do show you is i have used let me log in yeah i have used the single repo code lens what does this single repo code lens do is like uh, it will try to sorry not single co uh, repo code lens uh, repository coder uh, we have done this earlier like you know creating a new flow and all like everything but uh, this time i have given a nice prompt like i have elaborated like what is my requirement and if you go back to my task which so the task number is 22107 the reason why i have already run the task was like it took like if you go to the task here it took like 9 minutes 9 and a half minutes close to 10 minutes which means that i'll show you first my requirement and please be precise about your command okay your requirement or your prompt i asked to generate a mule flow that sinks salesforce data into snowflake on a daily basis using a scheduler which runs like 6 am est every day source system is salesforce and you you can mention what kind of authentication it is using and i asked like externalize all the authentication credentials into secure property for placeholders and i told like you know we need to fetch some you know fields from an object like asset object or something like asset id last modified client id etc and the target system is snowflake which uses standard username password based authentication and uh, even those credentials should be externalized so target snowflake table will have these fields and i asked to map them i gave some clear instructions like how to map and i said like you there should be a scheduler which should run like every day at 6 am then it should query the you know query the salesforce records from last 24 hours using last modified date insert or upsert if supported so see how precise my instruction is you, so whenever you are playing around please try to give a prompt you know very nice prompt if you are not good at writing a prompt on instruction you can always use chat gpt kind of stuff to create a nice prompt you can say like hey this is my requirement can you could you please create a prompt for me to let curitech ai know that you know it should generate this flow that will do for you and i told like it should follow all the non functional requirement best practices like logging externalizing name securing error handling etc okay implement error handling and everything so this is what i have provided and definitely if a developer needs to do this kind of basic stuff they will take it will take at least like one or two hours to complete this process again best practices and all when you consider it will at least take a day to complete like including all the best practices and we we might miss some points in that but you can see it took only 10 minutes to complete this task now i will show you like go to code review this has already been run so i didn't want to waste like 10 minutes on this video but yeah you can see whenever you see like uh, m here 
m is like modified or i think modified but whatever you see on the red color here which means it is modifying the existing file because whenever I created a new project, of course, like you will see mule artifact JSON and form.xml. If not mule artifact.json, you will see prom.xml. I created this artifact JSON, of course. So you can see like earlier it was like 4.7 version. Now it's 4.8. You can see the differences, what changed here. So you can see like there is a global config file created, Snowflake sync XML I created. I will show you this on the AnyPoint Studio plugin, okay? You can see different, different, everything is created. So now, before click, I told you, do not approve here if you want to implement those changes inside any point studio. What you need to do is like, you need to click on apply changes over here. Now I am doing that, click on apply changes. You can see everything has been modified slowly, right? It is trying to, you know, scaffolding. So you can see that's been running. So let me quickly check if the flows are generated, yes. You can still see like some kind of errors, but that should be totally fine. So let me see what happened. It's probably the snowflake config, but let's come back to this. Okay. Now you can see this application has been generated, right? Very clear error handling has been done. Logging is done. Let's see if there's a, those are like externalized. You can see all the connectors are already in place. I can see in my mule palette, my Snowflake and Salesforce connectors already. And let me see the version of Salesforce. It's using 10.14.4 version. So make sure that it is using the right version or the latest version. So you can see that I never mentioned like, you know, you have to use this connector and all. It, that knows like, you know, you need to use query. You can see the SQL query is created. Everything is externalized here, okay? last modified date, last in hours, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there is a set variable component also created, you know, to know the sync start time. And uh, also like it is doing a check whether it is returning any records. If it is returning the records, then it looks for, go forward and, you know, uh, it will create the mapping to match it with the snowflake. And uh, it created a flow reference prepare bulk insert here, the table name and records. And if you go to this insert like Snowflake stuff, you know, input parameters and records, everything is created for you just within 10 minutes. If you go to global.xml here, uh, if I edit Snow Salesforce config, let's see. Uh, you can see OAuth username password is selected here because I asked to use like token based authentication. You can see all the placeholders are in place, including the token endpoint right it's super super just imagine like if you are doing it by your own you can miss any one of these steps correct so you can additionally say like hey i wanted to implement connection pooling and all you can always provide that in your feedback here so that it will generate let me try like you know uh please implement connection pooling for both salesforce and um snowflake okay let me provide the feedback then what it will happen is for the same task it will try to regenerate the file okay so the request changes don't think that this is an error this is just like task in progress so i requested so we will wait while we are waiting this i would like to show you like what how it was created so or username password automatically selected secured property placeholder, you can see the encryption key and all. You don't have to because like sometimes you feel like your data is being, there are some sensitive information like passwords and all that you don't want to share to security care, but it's fine. You can always say like, hey, put a placeholder, you know, so that like, you know, you can see here like secure config file is created. Let me go, go to source main resources. We have like secure config.yaml and secure config template.yaml. So if you go to secure config, you can see it is saying like replaces, replace with, you know, encrypted Salesforce username, password. See how uh, precisely the instructions were like provided here. You just need to, you know, it gave underscores. The reason why it gives under with underscore is like if you double click, it will select everything and you can just replace it. That That is something which I really liked. And see the comments here, right? It's like, you know, these are the Salesforce secure properties. These are Snowflake's properties. This is the encryption key. It's super useful. And this is the regular like config template.yaml again, like, you know, if you want like a kind of uh, maybe 
like dev environment based you can always choose this mm, that is super cool and if you go open this one like regular ones it has created a place folder for this as well like it is extracting the values from there like from your secure properties and it is putting over here probably that's because like um, they are using only like configuration properties it is picking up the values from this yaml file so it has the values coming from there so you can see query batch size mod everything is in place including the comments which will help and you can see the scheduler the con expression this is what we always do like we will take at least like five minutes to search for this con cron expression right of course 6 a.m est is not a hard one but imagine that uh, you need to run it at specific time on specific days so you know it's so cool so i love this definitely you need to try this is how we can boost our development all right again you have to always review your code looks everything is nice you can run it on local and test it let's quickly check like what's wrong with um, snowflakes one jdbc driver of course jdbc driver is meeting so we might need to add or we have to ask because this is something we need to download so that should not be a big task we can just add the jdbc driver to the pom.xml it should download but i feel this is really 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 a game changer at least for the developers you can see the data view files are also externalized it's not something like we put it so it is following all best practices i love this okay uh, i'm not just you know promoting this plugin but i feel like you know when i used it especially you know when when we see those changes on any point studio it's super cool all right so still my requested changes are uh, they are working on the requested uh, changes but um, yeah this is how you can use repository code lens all right uh, sorry repository coder now next thing i wanted to let you know like you can always have multiple workspace you can create multiple workspace based upon your needs okay and next thing that i wanted to let you know is like you can create api keys so you can connect to the repositories so if you go to the repositories tab earlier i used to have like local repo and you know i used to upload projects from local but then i connected with my github i'll show you like how to connect with github repository it's the same process if you are using bitbucket or gitlab or azure devops uh how to use like api keys again people who are clicking the api keys for the first time it's a small bug just refresh it again go back to settings and go to api keys you can view them so i'll show you in the next video like how to connect to github and how to extract i'll give you one small example here uh, once you may once you pull those uh, projects from the repository and when you apply the changes there you can you know click on approve for now you know what we are doing is like we are not clicking approve on the ui but if you are doing that uh, if you are grabbing that project from github you can click on approve from the ui so that like you know the changes will be applied and it will create a pr for you the pull request for you and you can see all the changes that are you know that are uh, made by uh, the plug you know this security care so you have super cool things that you can try it out please try it out and give some feedback so that like we can share it with the uh, product team and uh, yep join the slack channel to use the uh, curitech ai plugin i will be commenting on the on this video so that you can join the slack channel and feel free to say hi and i hope you like this session probably i will it is taking some more time to implement all these changes but uh, yep uh, once these changes are done then it will again ask you to like apply changes over here uh, mm, okay let's see let's see what happens if i click on apply yeah it's not ready yet but yeah so once this is like once the, once the task is done it will uh, we can apply the changes and once it is done it's a regular process you can click on apply changes here you will see all those stuff here okay probably in my next video i will show you like i don't want to waste time on this video but in the next video i'll show you those changes and i hope you like this session please please play around with other tasks you know like repository coder or you know single repo code lens probably i will show you that single repo code lens by connecting to github in my next video so please subscribe to, to my channel if you haven't already for all the latest updates thank you